My wife Kelly and I have two children, Bella and Alfie. And Alfie loves to play this game called Would You Rather, where he gives you two different statements and asks you which one you'd rather pick. Sometimes it's really difficult. Let's play Would You Rather right now, okay? So would you rather go into the past to meet your ancestors or go into the future to meet your great-grandchildren? Would you rather talk with animals or be able to speak all foreign languages? Here's a tough one. Would you rather lose your keys or lose your mobile phone? <laughs> Difficult, aren't they? Would you rather have X-ray vision or have magnified hearing? These are difficult. Finally, would you rather eat from a sumptuous banquet on a ship that is sinking or endure the sweat and the blood and the tears of a battleship that isn't sinking but is headed to ultimate victory? Which would you rather be on? A sinking ship, eating a great feast, or on a battleship that is difficult but is headed for certain victory. The church leader, Simon Holly, once really impressed on me this very fact that so many Christians think that our lives should be like that cruise liner and that we're entitled to all these wonderful, great things. But he said, ultimately, every single one of us has been born onto a battleship whether we like it or not. Christians are in a spiritual battle. And it's not easy. You know it's not easy, and I know that too. But ultimately, we are headed for victory. So I ask you this question. Where do you want to be? Do you want to pretend you're on a cruise liner that's sinking, like this earth? Or do you want to fully get on board that battleship of God this morning because it's headed for victory. Which would you rather? Martin Luther King once wrote a book and the title of the book asked this question. He said, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? Life Church Lincoln, today, where are we going? Where is this ship headed? As we reboot, as we have done for seven weeks now. I want to ask you simply today, where are you going? What world are you stepping into? Because you have the choice. What choices have you made or do you maybe still need to make to see that you can step into the world that you choose to live in? We've heard in recent weeks so many different things, more than I could list right now. We've heard about going on an amazing adventure. Pete was saying last week about God is calling us on this incredible adventure. We've heard about the fact that being a Sunday Christian is just so yesterday. We've heard about how we can't be lukewarm about our faith. We've either got to be in or we're out. So many other things. I encourage you to listen back to anything you've missed. Remember these words from Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, where it says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is renewing all things. He can even renew your life. Your past has no hold on you. Whatever you've done or not done, it has no hold on you. Yeah, the past has consequences, but ultimately it doesn't fully determine your destiny. You hold the key to your future. So where are you heading? And what changes do you need to make so that like that battleship, you are right on course? If you have some work to do to get yourself on course, to get you to go exactly where you need to do, then that is good. The first step is always recognising what the problem is or where you maybe need to change. Dare I say it, perhaps all of us, myself included, and I, I know I do, maybe all of us have choices to make. 
taking choices and doing it today, not leaving it till tomorrow or another time when you're challenged, but doing it today to commit yourself into every day to those core Christian values, those disciplines, fellowship, time with other Christians, prayer, worship, and reading from God's word, the Bible, and asking God for a new, renewed desire to share Jesus with other people, inviting people into your home or your garden or going to other people. That's the first step, realising that you need to take some decisive action. The businessman Stephen Covey once said these really wise words, and I believe they're true of all of us today. He said, we are the creative force of our life. And through our own decisions, rather than our conditions, if we carefully learn to do certain things, then we can accomplish these goals. What goals are you setting? Where do you want to be in 12 months' time? Added to that, looking back on that piece of scripture from Isaiah, if we're going to be so obsessed with the way that we think God moves or the way God has moved in the past, then we could forget or miss out on the new things that God is doing. We need to forget the former things, the way you moved before, and look to say, God, where are you moving right now? How are you moving? You're doing this new thing. Where is it happening and why? And how can I be involved? How can I be on board? The American preacher Stephen Furtick said this, don't miss what God is doing in the present by only looking to what he did in the past. He's the God, not of the dead, but of the living. Remember, we can't prepare to go back into a world that no longer exists. So what are we doing to make sure we're going to be part of this new world? Where do we still need to reboot? Where are we going from here? Are we just deciding we're going to go back into this old world that doesn't exist? Or are we making our mind up to go into this bold, brave new one? In my mind, we need to look at two different things. We need to look at ourselves and see where we are, how we might need to change. Are we best positioned? And then we need to look at God and saying, how can you help us? And where are you taking us? What are we doing? What's God saying to you about this? right now for me we need to in act intentionally not just occasionally or when we feel like it but every day so just like that battleship we can be positioned on the right course and headed for victory i remember years ago when i was just a kid i wasn't even a teenager and my mum and dad dragged me and my siblings along for the Lincoln March for Jesus. And we went on a big march throughout the streets. There was hundreds of Christians all marching through, through the streets, singing worship songs, making this march to show that we were Jesus children, that we wanted to not only show that we were children of God, but we wanted to encourage other people to make Jesus Lord of their lives as well. And when we were in Uphill Lincoln, quite close to the cathedral, I just noticed at one point uh, an older lady with her friend just ahead of me. She asked this question of these two teenage girls who kind of waved at them. She just said to them, this older lady, she said, are you coming with us? As in, do you want to come and join our march? And they kind of went like, well, no thanks. We're not really interested. I believe God is saying to us today, are you coming with me? Just like that lady did to those girls. He says, are you coming with me? He's saying, just like that ship is heading to an eventual victory, he is saying, I am going on a victorious march into eternity. Do we want to go on that adventure with him? Do we? Do you? Make no mistake. God has already won the victory and the adventure is already happening. And the only question we have to ask ourselves this morning is, are we going with him? Are we? 
Now, I'm not telling you off this morning. I'm not saying you need to work harder. I'm not saying you need to be more committed to church activities. I'm not saying you need to slog your guts out so that God gives you his approval. I'm not saying you have to give more. I'm not saying any of these things. I'm simply saying you need to adopt the right mindset and then the right practices and everything else will follow. And you will soon realize, wow, I'm on this incredible victory. Remember, God is already marching victoriously forward. The only question is, are we going with him? Ultimately, when we pray, when we read the Bible, or when we fellowship with one another, we spend time with other Christians, or when we witness, as we could call it, or evangelize or share our faith with other people, we're not actually doing God a favor by doing those things. I believe by doing those things, we're doing ourselves a favor. By reading the Bible, by sharing my faith, whatever it may be, I'm doing myself a favor. I believe whether you see it or not, it's the same for you as well. Think of it like this. It's like eating a really nourishing meal with someone else. You can be sitting down at the table as someone else and they could eat like a really fatty, greasy burger and you could eat a really healthy salad with plenty of protein and lots of vitamin, vitamins and minerals. Ultimately, that meal only benefits you. It doesn't benefit the other person. And God is saying this morning, I want you to do these things so that they benefit you. I want you to do my work because it will benefit you. Yeah, as well as those other people, it will primarily benefit you by asking you to do the things I've called you to do. So, for example, worship, really, yeah, it does glorify God, but worship also changes us. It changes our perspective and what we think about. Prayer doesn't just show that so much that we're, you know, we're pious and we're really good at praying. Prayer connects us in with what God's already doing. The reading the Bible shouldn't just be something to increase our knowledge. It should be there to help us fall deeper and deeper in love with who God is, to help stir our levels of faith and trust to greater levels, to higher heights. It's the same with other core Christian disciplines. I love it when I spend time with other Christians because, yeah, my presence maybe benefits them. But I never fail to come away from having time with other Christians. I never fail to come away without being encouraged. I love it. Ultimately, we should live our lives within a relationship with God already knowing that we have his love, already knowing that he approves of us. You don't need to do these things to get God's approval. He already approves of you. He already loves you. Do these things to get even closer to him and to live the life that he wants you to live. Remember these things. God is always thinking about you. He pursues you with his daily goodness and his love. You truly are his son or his daughter. When you pray, he will do more than you could ever pray for. Remember, God wants you to prosper. Remember, he will never leave you nor betray you. He wants you in his family. He is interested in you. And when you confess your sins to him, he remembers them no more. There is so much more I could go on all morning. But God is saying this to us now more than ever as we go out into our communities to share our faith, to be witnesses to who God is. He's saying this more than ever. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. Go out, make disciples of all nations. It's never changed, nor will it ever. It's called the Great Commission. But we can only do this effectively if those core things between us and God are in a good place. I'm not saying every day has to be perfect. I'm not saying that you have to feel holy and right and wonderful all the time. But ultimately, those things need to be in a good state. 
if we're going to effectively make disciples of other people. It's important to look back at those words of Jesus and remember that the word therefore, when he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, it's not so much something we should do, but it is an imperative. It is a command. And another way we could translate it would be as follows. Having gone, therefore, go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and everything else. Notice the difference. Having gone. So already doing it. There's no debate about whether or not we should do this. We're all commanded to go and make disciples of all nations. You might think you're not equipped, but God says, I've called you to do it. Make a start. We're called to be God's witnesses to the very ends of the earth. People often call evangelism, sharing your faith, witnessing. How does this make sense to us? Well, just imagine you've witnessed a crime. You've seen something take place. When you've seen it take place, you are therefore a witness and you might be called up to give evidence in court. So think about this in your own life. How can you be a witness to God? Well, the best way is to start with your own life. You don't need to go up to people and say, can I just tell you about how God really does exist, despite the fact there seems to be lots of atheists in the world today. You don't have to debate God's the, all the rights and the wrongs or the existence of God or any, anything like that. You can just say to people, hey, can I just tell you for a minute about what Jesus Christ has done in my life? And when we witness like this, we not only become better disciples, but we also get on our way to making disciples of other people. We live out kingdom values. If you don't know what kingdom values are, there's loads in the New Testament to help us understand what they are. We'll see our lives change and our relationship with God and other people flourish. Now we could open for church services now, even with face coverings, even with not being able to talk to, to one another, even having to kind of file in and file out and not really being able to interact. But I believe God is saying this, do this, open church services, but not yet. Because in the meantime, I want my children, my people, to help me come home into your community. That's right, your community. I believe what, that's what God is saying right now. Because we've talked for years about not going to church, but being the church. And we can't go to church right now. But this was never really the point. The point is to be the church and just gather to celebrate what God is already doing within us. And you can do this right now. You can gather for church and it will be in small groups. And we've given you lots of ideas in recent weeks. How can you go and witness to other people in your community, in your home, in your garden, wherever you're placed, whatever you do in your week? How can you bring Jesus into the conversation? It's up to you. Are you on board? Do you want to be on a cruise liner? Or do you want to be on the battleship that's headed for victory? I don't need to spell it out for you. You can do this. Everyone can. It won't be easy, but as Maxim Legas once said, don't seek comfort, seek life. Don't seek comfort, seek life. The church has been silent for too long so that we don't offend a world that is already going to hell in a handbasket. So let's boldly stand up now and scream God's goodness from the rooftops. You hold the key. What do you need to reboot so that you can be effectively in the place so that you can do good stuff for God? Will you be part of a generation, of a group of people that makes history, that changes your community, changes the world around us? I implore you, friends, take the call seriously, because as Hebrews tells us, God has made a day and he has called it today. There is nothing like today. Get ready for the homecoming of God into your community. You hold the key. I finish with my friend Martin Luther King just as I started. 
I must confess, my friends, he once said, that the road ahead of us will not always be smooth. There will still be rocky places of frustration and meandering points of bewilderment. There will be inevitable setbacks here and there. There will be those moments when the buoyancy of hope will be transformed into the fatigue of despair. Difficult and painful as it was, we must walk on into the days ahead of us with an audacious faith in the future. May it be the same for us. Amen and God bless you.